I've got a great side mate, so I'm sure we're going to do great. Floating head. <laughs> <laughs> so it's another day because it was getting pretty dark yesterday and we were pretty buggered so today's a new day um, I've bent the reinforcing rods into the brackets we've got uh, one to do there one in the middle and one at the other end so what I'm going to do now is um, get the postal digger going get the holes dug, fire up the old concrete mixer, wherever she is, there, and get the footings poured. So I'll check back in when that's done. <sighs> She's a beast. So that's about a meter. That hole in the center, it's not gonna have any load. Not like the outside post, which are holding the roof up. That's about 800. And again, about a metre deep. There we go. Next, um, I guess is get the concrete done. All boring stuff. So, despite the rain, all of the footings are done. Just a bit of a tidy up. Um, and move a bit of the soil. Let it set a bit harder, come back with the trowel. Trowel off and uh, you'll see what it looks like then. So. Footings poured, concrete done, and I've got the post brackets in as well. I'll just flip the camera around so you guys can have a look. Yeah, so as you can see, footing one, footing two, footing three. So as you can see, it's a grey, dreary day, so that's me done. I've cleaned up all the tools. A, a clean shovel is a smiling shovel, remember that. If you're planning on going off-grid like us, or you're escaping the rat race and moving into a container or a tiny home where everything just will not fit, I know you're having a hard time deciding what you'll have to part with. So, speak to our good friends at Caboolture and Bribe Island Self Storage. With an on-site manager, you can rest assured that your precious possessions are in great hands. You can find their details in the description below. How's that, Betty? Good? Yum, looks yummy. Sounds like Maggie's in my cucumber. Maggie in the cucumber, Tilly. Yep, she's getting watered. <laughs> I don't know why she likes that because it's so hairy. She's going to be in trouble. She's going to be ousted out. Come on, Maggie. Oh, <laughs> oh dear. She's a naughty lamb. Very naughty lamb. Hey guys, welcome back to Bodgen a Deck. <laughs> um, yesterday, uh, I managed, we managed to get the bearers on and sorry about the sun and we also cut the joists in measurements were spot on but the only measurement i stuffed up were the footing placements let me show you voila so we are a good 100 mil or four inches out on pretty much all of them so good old nicole she's come to the rescue with her brains again and said well why don't we just undo the joist hangers and move it that way, 100 mil. So I said, good idea, love, let's do that. So that's what we're gonna do. So looking at the deck further out, you see it kind of starts there, but the overall plan is to build a deck out of here, that's the bedroom, um, and a deck carrying on around to the bathroom. So 
what we're actually going to do is move it over here so it's not going to be a problem because the boards are running perpendicular to the house so good old Nicole problem solved so the whole thing that way 100 mil four inches so to get an overall picture um, the deck is going to move over to the left 100 mil so it's going to be virtually on that um, strut footing upright for the container but it doesn't really matter because that container there is our bedroom eventually we're going to have the deck go all the way up to there and as for this side where this is currently the bathroom uh, we're going to extend the deck all the way around and where this awesome shower is now we're actually going to build a U Butte outdoor bathroom which is a future project which I'm so excited to bring you guys gonna be really looking forward to that project uh, I've got my parents coming over hopefully um, towards the end of the year for my uh, birthday my big 5-0 um, I want to get all of this done for them because uh, you, you want to look after your parents don't you so get the deck done get that bathroom done and um, I've, we've got how long we got love three months three months to get it all done so uh godspeed <laughs> <laughs> we really enjoy making these videos and we hope you enjoy watching them too you talking to i want to talk to you we nick and i love making these videos and we really sincerely and truly <laughs> We love getting our creative juices flowing here on Rocky Muck Off Grid. <laughs> Just like we love creating videos for you. And we want to keep them coming. YouTube requires us to have a thousand subscribers to keep our channel alive. Click the big red word subscribe. Please support us. And we little ass. Ah, ah, hit Or subscribe, like, and share it with your friends. What? Great idea, Rocco. Yes, it is. But most important is to subscribe. So, have you done it yet? Okay, guys. Another day, and it's bright and sunny. We've got everything set up. Nick's now helped me. Now she's finished it. Finished it. <laughs> Finished it. The last video. Okay, some sunshine and exercise for me today. <laughs> <laughs> um, footings are set hard. Obviously not hard enough to um, take a load. So what we're going to do is we're going to use um, like axle stands to hold the bearers up. Now the bearers are going to connect directly to the house, so they'll be perpendicular to the house. Then we're going to put the joists in perpendicular to that so they're parallel with the house then if if we get time we can set up to run the boards perpendicular with the house again which is like a traditional veranda style deck nice. so we've got to get the insulated roof off the wood stock which has been protecting it from the weather so letting it dry out slowly so it doesn't bend twist and walk more than it has so that's going to be a bit of a fight and an issue for us but I've got a great side mate, so I'm sure we're going to do great. Great? Great. Great. Reporting for running a muck off grid live. Today we have a bent bearer. Now I'm going to get Nick, the cameraman, to show you just how bent it is. So you can see how it's bending out. So the scent is pushing out. So we want that bowing in to the deck so if you're looking at the deck straight on it bows in like this and it's also bowing up we want that bowing up we call it a frown because once the deck weight is on it it should level itself out I'm not going to plane it too much and we want that bow in so when we put the joists through they will straighten that bow out great just three steps forward put your hand down both hands down So your shirt blends in with the sky. Look down at us. You're a fly.
floating head. <laughs> <laughs> here notching this out coming to probably to there hopefully that's no more than 100 mil there and fitting another piece of c-channel over the top of here so we have enough strength <laughs> Maggie we have enough strength to uh, hold this end of the deck up so let's have a look and see how we go because if we can get that full length of seed pearling on there that's going to give us the most strength isn't it mm, so mm. we can fit it on and just notch out the bits we really have to. <laughs> Fix it at the back, that would be good. Can you, can you have a look at this though? <laughs> I mean, that there is just That's... what we're dealing with all the time. You go and do something and it's it's like you design the project, you, you're happy with it, and then you're confronted with this shit and you think, oh, you get frustrated before you start. So you know you've got to spend at least a day or a couple of days stripping back the crap before you can do something properly. Yeah. Or you bodge on top, which I hate doing. Yeah.
this is a little funk. So I've, I've kept the top because it's got integrity. Yeah. It'll clip over the back mm -hmm. and the push. Ah. I've notched out of here. I've notched out of here. Ah. I've let this piece slide over. And I've had to notch the bottom out because obviously 150C channel by 65 won't go over a 150C channel by 65. So. Yeah. Whereas that is what you call Bodgetastic. Bodgetastic. I might just niche that there. Please. Yeah, I think so. Then it'll sit in. Who doesn't love the Australian wild brumby? Did you see the man from Snowy River? Well, our Australian brumby is in trouble. A supposed population explosion has caused a culture war over Australia's wild horse. Accusations of overgrazing, trampling of parklands and riverbanks calls for our help to rehome these beautiful brumbies rather than to continue to allow them to be culled. Horse lovers argue that it's the gold mining and industry driving the horses out and ruining the parklands. Australian government parklands and wildlife are rounding them up and those not rehomed are taken to slaughter. Previously they were shot from choppers and left for dead. Our hope is to take on the wild horses and start them under saddle to help rehome them rather than see our heritage destroyed. The Brumby is a sound, sturdy horse with a very mild manner, perfect for children and new riders. Stay tuned as our Brumby bailout begins. Thank you so much to Michelle and Ian from Snowy Brumby Photography Adventures for allowing us to showcase their beautiful images. Awesome. So pretty much what we've done is extended our C channel so we can move our deck over 100 mil. That's it. So it's taken us six weeks. <laughs> no. But that's pretty much it. But I call that a success. And it's also reinforced that bodgy well job, hasn't it? Yes. Nice. So I've just slid this in the back here. Yeah, hot. And that's now hit this. Mm -hmm. And it's Solid as a rock, Jimmy! Sometimes it's better to go slower.
bloody ass and fresh to go away. Mm. Yeah. Otherwise she's going to have to wear a hard hat with this. Because there's a lot of dangerous stuff around here. Scrabble, scrabble. Yeah, no. Oh, yeah, good boy. Good boy. Cool. Good job I didn't break that. Mummy wouldn't have been happy with you. You can see that Jewish one. Look, look at that. Okay. So if you just let that out slowly and on and slowly and on, just want to see, gonna close that gap up. That's it, babe. Just like that. Wine time. Close. I'm, I'm frustrated. Yeah. Put it on yourself. Oh, thanks, three minutes thirty. Huh? Off grid. Now we've gone 10 steps backwards. Nick smashed a finger. I smashed my finger. Um, we've put most of the joists in, got it square, got it level, got it plumb, got it right. Put the tools away, apart from this one, because <laughs> we're going to get hammered now. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Taking the pets for a walk now. Oh, let's take the pets for a walk. Yeah. They can come with us. There. They're ready to. Are they invited? They've been wanting our attention all afternoon, you probably noticed right. while we were working, so it's their time now. All right, Bye see you tomorrow. Then. Getting the animals fed. <laughs> They're hungry today. Listen to those pigs. Kitty fell are waiting. Rocco. 
You hungry? You had a big day too. Yeah. The dogs are learning to round up the guinea fowl in a gentle way. These two have become thick as thieves, haven't they, at feed time? <laughs> I think you're going to have to get a bigger bucket. Yeah. Refeeding time's an adventure, isn't it, babe? It certainly is. In the morning when I'm in my PJs and hairs all over the place. <laughs> Uh, guinea fowl have already started going up the tree. Maggie, away from the fence. Maggie. 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 She can smell that food. Look at that pumpkin. So healthy. Dinner for pigs. Chickens are in their tractor. This is a prototype. Details and plans to come. For those of you who'd like to make your own. This is a typical end of the day for us. It's, we call it witching hour. Everyone's hungry. Everyone's noisy. Everyone wants some attention. And everyone's out to play. Mm, someone found a bone. Mm. Rob's slowly guiding the men. They've had a couple of nights where they've gone up the tree to roost. So we want to retrain them to go into their pen at night. It's safer for them and uh, if they're going to lay eggs or have babies we want to have them confined so that we can A. catch them if we need to cull any for food or raise the chicks in a more appropriate manner. I've heard that guinea fowl aren't too great with um, caring for their young. This one here on the ground is a female, lavender with the white chest. She's defiant. She's the one who drives everyone else out. Looks like she's staying out tonight. <laughs> Pigs are happy, got some dinner, they've had some veggies this morning and they're just about ready to be moved back out of this cell down to the next one that's really nice and grassy. Australorp and Rhode Island red chickens and, and one rooster. rooster, yay! Got our beautiful lunch with the homemade whole milk bread. I'm thinking our calf isn't too far off but... Got the high protein, there'll be a scare factor. So I'm looking forward to seeing them happily in their tractor. Clamps, your best friend. I've squared it all up. How's that feel? <laughs> super, super. People have been asking us, did the bees stay? It's amazing, doesn't it? Break time over. Back to it.